All right, so we got a lot of stuff going on at the office here, recording a bunch of trainings, got a dog walking behind me. <laughs> Company dog. Um, but in this episode, you're gonna see a, a small portion of a really good Sales Wells podcast uh, that we recorded yesterday. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of um, is what the original owners here in our company created in the culture of our organization uh, and what we've been able to build. And so we're gonna talk about that, how to create culture uh, in a corporate setting. And you're gonna see about 15 minutes of it, but it's an hour long episode. So definitely check out the Sales Wolves podcast to see the full episode and, and get a little bit more information on how we've built such an incredible, incredible culture. Uh, but I'm gonna get right back to it. As you can see in here, we're about to do some more uh, training and recording trainings on how to do these new one-on-one -on -one scripts. Uh, one thing about our business is the only thing constant about it is change. <laughs> so every time we change, we gotta record new um, uh, scripts so that we can get it out to our agents in the field on, on how to incorporate these new changes. So we're gonna get right back to it, but I hope you enjoy this episode of the Sales Rules Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 71. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. I thought I was the host. <laughs> co host. <Joseph> Caldwell. <laughs> we are co people. <laughs> co host. He's my co life partner. <laughs> host. <laughs> Something like that. So. This is episode 71, and we are the Sales Wolves. Yes, we are. Uh, your dog's probably going nuts. I forgot that no, he's sitting right there. And we have a third code host, which if we could pan down, which you can't, uh, there is a puppy. You would us. see that Thor. That is the company dog. His Our name sweet is Thor. little Thor. He's snoozing. He had a rough morning of play. Dude, speaking of Thor, I did legs for the first time two nights ago, yeah. like hard, and then I ran five miles just today. Like I can God hardly of... walk. I am Tho Thor. You're Tho Thor? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> elevated to the level of the God of Thunder. Oh, uh, no. Just hurting. This is episode I 71. I thought you were going to say no, just Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> just Hercules. Just a her, not a he. Um, <laughs> this is episode 71, and in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, culture. And as we were kind of preparing for this episode, we realized it's not the easiest thing to talk about because no. it's largely intangible. Right. But if created in the right way, can be kind of, I guess, palpable would be the better word sure. when people are around it or mm -hmm. when people are experiencing it for the first time, like in person, live, sure. uh, which we experienced that. We had one of our uh, boot camp trainings that we do uh, every so often. We have our new agents that are from all across the country come in to our office and it's a a full, full, like Friday evening, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, uh, kind of drinking from a, a fire hose. Uh, but they're able to really kind of feel some of this kind of family atmosphere yeah. and, and culture that, that Joseph has built within our organization. And uh, it's interesting, as they left, every single one of them, that was their biggest takeaway. It was, wow, like, like you hear it on the webinars, you hear it on, on Voxer, which is a communication app that we use. Um, you read about it, you're told about it, but until you actually get here and experience it, True. you're still kind of like, ah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, they're all left blown away and completely yeah. bought in at that point. Sure. Um, and so one thing I wanted to start with, there was this Deloitte's uh, 2016 Global Human Capital Trend Report, and it said that 86% of their respondents viewed corporate culture as important or very important to business success. However, even though so many believe their company's culture is key, only about 12% said that their company is driving the right culture, and 28% said that they understood their organization's culture. So you've got 86% are saying corporate culture is the key to success. Yep. Only 12% are saying that their company is driving the right culture, and only 28% say they even understand. That's so the bigger one. I would say that's a fairly big gap. It's, I would it, say yeah, that's, that's a, a problem. Uh, implementation gap. Yeah. Um, so in other words, we know that this thing we call culture is an important part of building a successful enterprise, but we're not sure how to make it better or really even what it is. Right. And so that's what we want to talk about today. Um, Joseph can give you some of the insight of what it was like 
coming up with the culture because that's the thing that like a culture has to be created mm -hmm. from the inception but then once it's created it has to be cultivated and developed over daily. time and it has to be communicated right. on a daily basis um, so we'll kind of jump into that uh, you want to kind of kick that off and just kind of in the very beginning how really you had a blank canvas yeah and you had to decide what did we really want um, you know, it's fascinating talking about this because a lot of people come into our company and experience the culture in the office. And from guests to people that work here to our agents that are in the field, and everybody gets the same thing, right? Yep. So something about culture is whatever your culture is, it's got to be consistent. Yeah. And when you create that, you just have to determine what type of company you want. So I, I remember, sorry, I remember, I remember sitting and thinking that um, I, how Google did their culture, how they had the nap pods and all the fun yeah. stuff and yeah. all that kind of thing. And I thought, well, I want to have a fun atmosphere. And so it was loosely. Did you learn that on that movie, The Intern? The yeah. Intern, actually. <laughs> like, but they had unlimited food. Fist me. And they were. Found me. <laughs> get, put it, get, 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 up in get up in there, bro. Get up in there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to put it on the line. Um, but we. It's we, we, uh, a great movie. It's a hilarious movie. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I thought, man, we get, you got to. Look, if I'm going to spend. A great portion of this life yeah you and I only have so many breaths mm -hmm. and if I'm gonna spend a lot of them working then I'm going to be in a culture and an atmosphere that I love yeah and I want to cultivate it if I'm gonna ask somebody to give their life a good portion of their life I mean mm -hmm. let's be honest like if you take how much people how much time people spend at work yeah versus play, versus home, versus sleep, everything else, a good portion of their life is spent working. Majority. So majority. So if I'm gonna ask somebody to do that, then I'm gonna create a culture that at the end of their days, they say that was a life well lived, mm -hmm. right? And so that was how we, we came at it, Jeff and Nathan and myself, um, in the very beginning. And it started with just us. Mm -hmm. And it started with, um, you know, we you hear that that uh, saying, "Families that eat together stay together." Yeah, but we started. You know how we do our whole company, and we have a meal together, and we all mm -hmm. come up with ideas and stuff like that to yeah. to further the bottom line and yep. and and have everybody engaged. Well, that started with me and Jeff and Nathan. Yeah, like it, it's it's not something that we thought one day. Oh, this would be cool because we want to make people feel special, but not really give them any. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because companies have have this. Um, they hear these ideas and they're like, oh, let's implement that. Yeah, let's check Be that box. Let's check that box because we'll get more productivity out of the person. Hmm. Yeah. Because they give a shit more about the bottom line than they do actually about the individual. If they feel important versus are important, yep. then they think that that's the same outcome and results in productivity. Right. But and it's not, not because, because anybody can see through that over time. Yeah. They can see through that they're not important. Mm -hmm. um, and so... That was, uh, that was one of the things as we brought people along, we wanted them to feel the, how valuable they were. And so uh, a lot of times that took explaining why their job was so important. Yeah. Because legitimately, if you take the, if you take the janitor in, in a huge corporation, their job is vital. Oh yeah. Vital. I can literally sit down with that janitor and change his life by explaining to him. The CEO can sit down with the janitor and explain how what he does on a daily basis ties back to the company's mission, vision, oh, yeah. and values. I mean, they might as well be like the director of first impressions. I, I know. <laughs> if somebody go, if somebody, yeah. if a guest comes in here. And, and we have everything's all great, but they go in the bathroom and it's the smelliest, nastiest place on earth. Mm -hmm. That's like that's like when I used to be when I used to lend money, right? Yeah. And I would lend money on cars, and 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 you know you can look at the credit report and it may look okay. You can look at the person and they may smell nice and dress up <laughs> nice, but the real test is walk past their car yeah. and look in the back seat. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's how McDonald's they McDonald's wrappers and it, please don't tell the story about the one thing you saw. Mm -hmm. Oh god! Up, but but anyway, 
<laughs> that right there, it's a telltale, yeah. right? Oh uh, yeah. And and you can you can look at that person because they don't have it together right now. Mm -hmm. They don't have it together right now. They how they're going to treat this one is how they're treating that. It's the how you do anything is how you do everything. Is how you do everything, yeah. right? And that includes and so it really has to start from the top. It has yeah. to start from the inception. And if there's a company that doesn't have it, then you have to get your your key people and your direct reports, and you've got to lay the law down on the company culture or the mm -hmm. company mission, vision, and values first. Um, I sat in a meeting one time, and this was about two years into the business, and somebody said, well, what's your mission, vision, and values? And I was like, well, this is what we do. Yeah. And they were like, no, no, no. And they put my feet to the fire. And so how I, long ago was that then that you, that was, that you put those things in place? Because it was before I came. We had before. It was six years ago, okay. five years ago. Got just like a year before. Yeah. Yep, five years ago. Yeah. Right around there. And I went, oh my gosh. It started with me and Jeff and Nathan. We knew. Yeah. Because yeah, we yeah. got together and we talked about it and we, we walked through everything together and mm -hmm. we, we had fun together. We played together. We got our families together. Yeah. Um, we knew how, Nathan knows how much I value him and his the role he plays. And Jeff knew how much. We valued him and the role he plays, and but we it wasn't permeating through the first couple employees, okay. and they just didn't know. Yeah. So in what we do, we have a retention department, right, and 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 we have salespeople. The two were disconnected. Mm -hmm. So one sold the business, one retained it, <laughs> and the two had no idea how the other one did anything. Yeah. And so they didn't appreciate it nor respect it. And so, and, and so, therefore, if my goal is for that person to really feel valued, then everybody else in the company has to value them. Yeah. And so it's, it's not like you can wave a wand one day mm -hmm. and create culture. No. It is not an easy thing to do. And we have a freaking unicorn here. Yeah. But it's because we took two little unicorn embryos and got those things to <laughs> <laughs> raise yeah. them up and, yeah. and, and, and created it, right? So, yeah. so a couple of things that, that just come to my mind, and, and I love how you said it's guests that come into our office because you're right. Like, it's not just employees and our agents. Like, I think back to when Sean sat through Top Gun and that Sean first Whalen, dinner, yeah. Sean Whalen. And after that first dinner, like he had, he had, he had already put together kind of what he was going to talk about in the six-hour workshop the next day. But after just sitting through our awards banquet um, that night, he was like, "Oh my gosh! Like, I can't even really explain what I just witnessed. But it's so different and so unique and so palpable." He was like. We we're gonna hang out afterwards. He's like, I got to go to the room because I got to pretty much rewrite what we're doing tomorrow yeah. based on what I just witnessed. Because this is an insurance company at the end of the day, right? And they just had an awards banquet celebrating sales success, and no one talked about insurance. No one talked about really even numbers, and no one talked about money. Right. And it was all about these values that we have, and all about legacy, and all yep. about. Um, just celebrating individuals uh, for things that didn't have to even do with their sales, like right. with the Mike Williams Award and things yep. that he was able to witness. And just the fact that he was able to witness a whole room of people where people were getting emotional oh, yeah. throughout. Uh, and that it wasn't just competition-based stuff. Yep. And, and it's awesome to sit back, like, you know, I've been here for four years now, for me to sit back and see that through someone's eyes for the first time again. Yep. And, and you, you, cause you, for, you forget like how special it really is until you see someone, especially someone that has very, um, very strong views on oh, yeah. everything, be able to look at something and be like, no, this is very special, That's, which was awesome to see. Uh, but one thing I think that has led to that is the fact that everything that you do within our organization and the culture that you've built, it's very unapologetic. Yeah, yeah. And you, know, you take if you if you don't stand for something, yeah. you fall for anything, right? Absolutely. So we took certain stances on things, mm -hmm. and we don't apologize for those. Yes, yeah. and, um, and you want to align with people that that, that believe the same that thing. believe the same thing. Yeah. And, that, and that I think because I'm I'm imagining the person that's watching this that their company does not have that culture, right? Um, and how we can help that person develop that culture. And it's like you said, like this is your company. And when it's your company, you want to set up this culture to where, like you said, that you just 
enjoy, yeah. that you, the way you want to live, and the way you want to go about every single day, and the legacy that you want to leave behind, like you created that, like you can create that. And then once you've created it, then you can attract others that fit into that mold and not really care about those that don't right? because they are going to become a cancer if they don't sure. fit into the mold that right. you've uh, created. And so finding those people that do align with your mission, vision, and values, and then when you find those people, like, it's... And you can see, do anything. And a lot of companies, though, they have a lot of people that align with their mission, vision, and values, but the company has gotten so detached from the individual. Yeah. Every single person is a human. Mm -hmm. And they have loves and likes and hates and wants and desires and they have hurts and pains and and they have a history and a past and all that comes with them into the company. Yeah. And if they don't know that you care more about them mm -hmm. than anything else, yeah. they're gone. Friend.